Hello, good afternoon. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European indices. The uh, market closed at 16.30, currently 1700. So, end of day review uh, on the Wednesday, 23rd of March 2016. As always, this video is being brought to you by CFDs or courtesy of CFDs.com. Be sure to visit www.cfds.com uh, for your trading needs, specialists in spread betting and CFD brokerage, and certainly earn up to uh, Two and a half thousand with our twenty well with their twenty five percent cash bonus offer. Terms and conditions apply. Alternatively, you can visit the educational site w.cfds.education uh, to certainly learn more. That's where I update my charts, analysis, etc. Throughout the uh, day. Okay, so this is my second video of the day. As always, a morning market report and then a uh, end of day report uh, into the European indices. Now, uh, first of all, uh, it's, I think the uh, this this video should be a summation of market ignores terrorism fears okay it's amazing how terrorism fears have uh, especially uh, emanating from brussels have been brushed aside and mainly that's due to the fact that the euro usd has plunged and the dollar certainly has appreciated you've seen euro U euro usd plunge to 1.150 i think the pivot low was for today and you can see usd jpy certainly move, moving high on the expectations of a potential sales tax hike delay in terms of the Asian markets, the Shanghai just about managed to finish in the green with 0.3%. Plus 0 the Nikkei finished flat, the Hang Seng flat. So again, markets, even in Asia, they've ignored the uh, terrorism fears and they choose to uh, focus on the liquidity tap. That's obviously uh, remains open. Okay, so let's see exactly where we are positioned. Uh, economic data-wise, uh, again, it was very weak today with regards to the economic data. In terms of uh, market moving news, anything major... Um, not really okay nothing really uh, nothing really under the fact that we had some uh, well we certainly had some uh, certain us data on top housing data and that certainly came in slightly weaker than expected overall new home sales at two percent expected was 3.2 uh, new home sales month on month oh, sorry that was a change month on month slightly better increase but the uh, change month on month was certainly weaker than expected so more or less in line uh, flat nothing really to be uh, what's afraid of or any real strength in the dollar so to speak now talking about the dollar index let's just bring up the chart of the dollar itself and see exactly where it's positioned because obviously it's hurt commodities i think the major news of the day was the uh, the oil price sliding quite substantially so let's bring up the chart of the dollar okay so the dollar on the daily chart as you can see certainly has bounced quite substantially let's just uh draw in our trend lines if we just connect the uh, diagonal trend lines and you can see that we're clearly into resistance for now uh, previous support equals resistance as well so bear that in mind okay uh, so the chart of the dollar okay so yes here we go so previous support equals resistance uh, if we use our Fibonacci retracement tool those that are into Fibonacci you can see that we are into that 61 75 percent resistance so therefore looking for a potential bounce in the uh, in anything that's versus the uh, dollar itself okay so certainly take that into consideration looking at a, um, a smaller time frame 60 minute chart at the moment uh, let's just see where we stand there. Okay, so using that fib tool again, taking the fib low to high to low. Again, like I said, it's that 61.75% fib ratio. Now you have left some unfilled gaps below. So again, all eyes will be on those gaps, potentially filling. Let me just clean up my charts here. And uh, so the first potential uh, target will be gap filled below. And you can see that we're already finding resistance as we speak on the dollar index okay so uh, having said that you can see the price of copper today very substantially uh, lower as the dollar obviously appreciates and also the price of oil as well so if i just bring up a 60 minute chart of oil uh, you can see that that level certainly as hell we even broke uh, below that key support at 40 dollars and we were currently trading at 40.1 okay on the uh, the actual price of crude so certainly keeping an eye on crude oil okay currently below 40 at present so that certainly is interesting okay 10 minute chart uh, currently fluctuating at this $40 level okay at the moment so interesting here Brent let's just bring up a chart of Brent as well here we go Brent okay so again certainly weak here in terms of uh, excess uh, uh, excessive supply of oil certainly hurting the market from that perspective so certainly interesting Okay, now in terms of copper as well, copper, you guys, you can see here, bearish engulfing candle. Having said that, the FTSE 100 has certainly held up well, even with such weakness in, in copper. You can see here, we're certainly plunging in copper, and yet the FTSE 100 has totally ignored it. So that tells you that um, the uh, the uh, the movement between uh, in, well, equities and forex to a large extent 
or, or fundamentals certainly has broken down due to the distortion of QE. Okay, QE certainly has distorted this market, and uh, it certainly has created a, a lot of strange market reactions. Okay, a plunging copper like this would certainly shave off at least 50 to 60 points to FTSE, and a plunging oil uh, should certainly, uh, given the fact that we were at uh, a pivot high of 39, currently trading at 38.5, 39.8 down to 38.5. Should again drop, knock another 30, 40 points of FTSE, and yet the FTSE 100 is certainly stellar today. Okay, so interesting, okay, interesting scenario. Let's bring up the chart of buns as well, because these are the main variables that we need to look at. Buns certainly moving higher, uh, move higher in buns, obviously forces the euro lower, and in turn obviously helps equity move, markets move higher. So buns and equities generally tend to move in tandem. So bear that in mind. And again, there has been a, a lag between the bonds and the uh, uh, the actual the European equity market as well. So I'll discuss that now. As you can see here, there's a move in the higher in the equity market. And obviously the bonds are certainly moving higher, but not in proportion. OK, not in proportion at all, given the fact that we did hear a pivot low of 3025 on the uh, on the euro stocks as well. So uh, certainly keeping an eye out for that. OK, uh, OK, right. So. The euro stock certainly pushed lower. Now, what was really confusing though was the actual plunge or move higher this morning. We hit a pivot high of 3075 before we started to move, reverse and move lower. So, again, certainly confusing move. Uh, I'm finding it very confusing to understand as to why we'd stay afloat all morning and then only to, only to reverse uh, when the US markets come on board. Very confusing, okay. Very, very confusing. But uh, again, it's uh, our job really to react. And you can see here now the market certainly is uh, constricting with us trading sideways for now, whether or not we push higher or we go for that gap. I did expect terrorism phase to have closed that gap, but what happened? We actually may have pushed up to uh, 3079, okay, 3075, uh, rather than going lower. So again, very confusing. How do we interpret that, okay? my perspective i'm certainly discounting out the uh, well certainly negating all aspects of uh, terrorism concerns okay because that's had no impact on the market at all uh, even with brussels etc it certainly hasn't caused the market to plunge as we focus more on qe and the euro usd like i said is currently languishing at that 1.1 i think the pivot low that we had was 1.160 on the euro usd and you can see that there's certainly room or potential to certainly move lower here on the euro and again, that will certainly help uh, European equities. So terrorism fears have actually helped European equities because it's forced the euro lower, thereby inflating the uh, export-driven uh, uh, market. So again, that's certainly some uh, food for thought. OK, right. In terms of the actual equity markets now, let's just move over to uh, let's start off with the German DAX. We've already looked at euro stocks. So let's go to the German DAX. As you can see, the German DAX pushed higher only to give everything back. Very, very strange. OK. Uh, we still are above 10,000, so again, the bulls certainly have something to celebrate. Going to a daily chart, you can see that we remain in this bullish channel. Okay, you have the unfilled gap that needs to close at 10,200, and that certainly seems to be the potential target for now. Okay, 60 minute chart on the uh, German DAX, you can see that we have potentially put a double top in at 10,100. Uh, although, having said that, we've closed the gap below, which is currently at 9,986. Okay, or 9,990. Okay, uh, and certainly has uh, uh, room, to, room to run higher. Uh, I did expect terrorism concerns on the day to have caused the market to sell off and close the gap below. It didn't do that, okay? And if it didn't do that, then you have to respect that, okay? If you want to continue to fight the market, if you continue to fight the market, the market was, was certainly going against you by two to 300 points. You had a pivot low of 9 at 100, now you had a pivot high of 10,100. If you traded the market based on terrorism concerns being negative for the market, etc., etc., you can see exactly what the result would have been. You would have been stopped out on your show, okay? So if the market is not taking into account terrorism concerns and is totally ignoring that at all together, ignoring geopolitics, then you have to adjust accordingly. OK, don't be stubborn. Just accept it. Move on. OK, realize that this market is totally ignoring it. The characteristics of the market are ignoring it. The price action is ignoring it. And you continue to trade in the opposite direction. OK, so switch your minds to bullish. For now, it's very impressive the fact that we're above 10,000, even with, with, with obviously this, the ongoing concerns terrorism concerns and uncertainty etc and a stronger dollar due to the fear aspect etc etc that certainly is very very interesting okay right uh, either way uh, but also better remember the caveat that the uh, str stronger dollar generally equals a weaker euro weaker euro is exactly what the european market needs okay now german dax is in that position at present you certainly have support Gapfield has certainly held and 200 ma has held and that will be your support zone for now. So previous support equals resistance here at this uh, 9960. And then obviously you've got a gap fill as well. 
Okay, currently, uh, currently trading on the German DAX. Uh, currently, the uh, price at present is around ten thousand and ten. Okay, so certainly remaining ab above water and certainly remaining bullish for now. Okay, with regards to the German DAX, with a potential target of ten two hundred. Look at the French CAC now. Let's see exactly where this is positioned. Now, let's go to a daily chart first of all. Uh, we certainly have broken out of the bullish channel, but we are holding that gap fill support. So certainly an argument for consolidation before we move higher. Okay. Uh, we certainly have ignored this uh, diagonal trend line, so I'll certainly ignore that as well. Okay, we've certainly closed that gap. Support certainly remains at 4.350 for now. We have put in a higher higher low, so again, that certainly needs to be respected. So we could may well we may well have this continuation pattern. So again, watch out for this symmetrical wedge, and we shall see exactly which way this breaks. But for now, that 4.5, uh, 4.560, 45, sorry, 4.360 to 4.350 zone remains support on the French CAC. Having said that, having said that, uh, this pattern it needs to be respected too. So you've got the left shoulder here, obviously you've put your head in and you're looking for a right shoulder and obviously looking to move lower. Then you do have two gaps that need to be filled below. So this is open, this is open, this is fair game and either way you one can argue, okay? Having, I mean, looking at a 10 minute, given the fact that you've double bottomed here as well, you are looking to potentially push high on the back, on the back of a weaker euro. So again, that's certainly something to uh, take into consideration. And also given the fact that US markets remain resilient and remain very, very strong. Now, we bring up the S&P 500. Let's see exactly where we stand there. Now, the 10 minute, the 60 minute chart, we've broken out this uh, rising contracting wedge pattern. So therefore, one would con conclude that we're bearish. Uh, the um, 10 minute chart of the S&P 500. At present, one could argue that you have this H&S formation type uh, move at present consolidating for the right shoulder looking for a right shoulder around 2050 zone and then you're probably going to pounce this trade so again that's certainly something to consider as well okay in terms of the uh, the actual market and uh, you are looking for downside targets below okay and going over to the daily chart the diagonal trend line certainly is holding really well okay so certainly an argument for the s p 500 to retrace based on like i said terrorism but as we all know the markets are totally ignoring that for present whether or not it starts to uh, delay the reaction or have a delayed reaction that's a totally different question altogether the, the german or should we say nasdaq now has an unfilled gap that needs to close at 4480 4490 and it certainly seems to be targeting that the 60 minute chart at the moment is finding support although we have broken out of this uh, uh, bearish channel as such so again that certainly remains a concern uh, going forward, so uh, in terms of the price action, any signs of weakness, any fundamental news flow that's bearish, I will certainly be the first one to pounce and switch my bias and go short. But for now, we certainly seem to have stabilized, especially with the dollar. And uh, given the fact that Aussie and Kiwi into support, commodities into support, it's very hard to uh, exert or have an over bearish bias for now. Okay, so again, certainly needs to respect that. 10 minute chart, the pivot high has an unfilled gap at uh, 4440. And that gap certainly will be targeted from my perspective. That's the uh, potential aim now in terms of uh, the movement higher, given the fact that the dollar is into resistance. Okay, that certainly is going to be interesting how that plays out. Nevertheless, that's the market for you and always ready. Okay, now going over to the FTSE 100 now, just to finish off this video. Okay, the FTSE 100 has this rising contracting wedge pattern, so certainly now possibility of it breaking down. The 60-minute chart remains resilient, remains very, very strong. Uh, the pivot low was 61110, and ever since we never looked back. So, the 60 minute chart certainly seems like it wants to retest that 6240 zone on the expectation of uh, a potential uh, oil market rally that certainly is sustained. Now, we have had a pivot low of 4170 or 6170 before we moved higher quite substantially. So, you can certainly see that the bulls are very, very um, uh, hungry to buy every dip that comes along. So that's certainly easy to respect as well, okay, as a trader. Now, using a Fibonacci trend line, if you diagonal, draw, draw, draw the diagonals across, you can see that we certainly have a breakout, and you are looking at uh, 6206 and obviously 6214 uh, on the potential upside once we have that breakout. So, again, that needs to be respected too. Okay, I think that's a market wrap. Be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and um, certainly uh, qualify for that potential bonus offer. Uh, offer. And uh, I wish you the best with regards to the uh, rest of your trading week. Goodbye.